Welcome to GovQ, the new game show where you get to show off what you know about American government and politics. My name is Mr. Review, and I'm here to make the complex simple and the confusing clear. How does GovQ work? Simple. I'll read you 10 questions. Answer the first question correctly and keep playing. Answer all 10 questions correctly and you're the big winner. Wait a minute. You're the winner? Democracy is the big winner. Welcome to GovQ. Let's play. Question number one. A fundamental question we as a democratic republic have had to answer since our inception is, how strong should our central government be? How many states should we have? Should our Supreme Court be the least dangerous branch? The fundamental question we've had to ask as the Democratic Republic is actually quite simple and quite profound. How strong should our central government be? Question number two. Historically, how have our shared political values been passed down from one generation to another? News and entertainment, self-discovery and observation, family and school. Believe it or not, folks, it's family and school. Question number three. James Madison had political efficacy in mind when he wrote the essay Federalist 10. In it, Madison advocated for a pluralist political system, an elitist political system, a political system made up of the best and the brightest. James Madison and Federalist 10, arguing for a large republic because a large republic would mean a lot of competing factions. In that way, not one faction would control the whole. A system where there are a large number of competing factions is called a pluralist political system. Number four, which of the following best defines federalism? The separation of power between national, state, and local governments. The separation between legislative, executive, and judicial branches. The separation of power between foreign and domestic policy. That unique brand of government found here in the United States, we call it federalism. Sovereign, national, state, and local governments. Question number five. The reserved powers were given constitutional authority in which amendment? First Amendment, Fifth Amendment, Tenth Amendment. The reserved powers are all about states' rights, powers given to the state governments. It's found in the Tenth Amendment. Question six. How has federalism hindered the efficient advance of civil rights. National policy can still be checked by state sovereignty. State supremacy is constitutionally protected. Congress has no authority over state law. Civil rights advances have been hindered by federalism because, boy, each state has different views on civil rights. National policy can still be checked by state sovereignty. Question number seven. What type of grant provides the greatest discretion? Categorical grants, block grants, fellowship grants. Of course, we're talking about federal money given to the states. The states would want the most choice possible. Give me money and let me choose how to spend it. That type of grant would be called a block grant. Question eight. How are you doing? So far, so good? When federal money for local projects is buried within a larger piece of legislation that has national significance, 
It is called a categorical grant, block grant, or earmark. Well, historically, these were called pork barrel projects. When members of the legislature, congressmen, you know, I'm hesitant to vote on that big bill, but stick something in there for my constituents alone, and then I'll vote for it. These pork barrel projects today are called earmarks. And the president has called for a return to more earmarks, maybe greasing the wheel of the legislative process. Maybe Congress would pass more if we had more earmarks. Question nine. Why do state governments find it difficult to resist federal money, either in the form of block grants or categorical grants? Grants are like receiving free money. Grants are highly popular with the average voter. Grants typically have little accountability attached to them. Well, I'm not so sure the average voter knows much about grants. And accountability? Hmm, not so much with a block grant. States like grants because it's like receiving free money. Number 10. Are you in it to win it? Have you gotten this far? I hope so. GovQ, let's see how you can do. Question 10. What is it called when power is put exclusively in the hands of a central government? Unitary government? Confederate government? Federalism? Hmm. Power in the hands of a central government alone? That, my friends, is called a unitary government. How'd you do? Did you get all 10 questions correct? Wonderful, you're the big winner. And you're not just the winner. Remember what James Madison said, the very success of democracy depends upon the knowledge and skills of its citizens. Sounds to me like you're making our democracy stronger. I'm Mr. Review. I'm here to make the complex simple and the confusing clear. You've been playing GovQ, the game show where you get to show off what you know about American government and politics. See you next time on GovQ.